friends, it is Sam, and I don't know about you, but I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. Are you freaking out a little bit? Like, I know that it's cold outside, but I'm definitely feeling the heat. I'm stress sweating a little bit because the holidays are this week. I'm in a glass case of emotion. So if you're like me and every single holiday season, you're the last minute gift giver. I mean, let's be real. If you're watching this video right now, we're probably soulmate. Hey, bestie, hope you're doing well. We're in this together, I promise. Then this video is for you because in today's video, we are going to be making some last minute gifts. Now, if you've been here for a while, then you might remember a whole bunch of gift ideas that I've shared on my channel from cutting boards to posters to charcuterie boards, charcuterie boards, those boards that you put cheese on. But let's be real, all of those projects, they take too long to make. So whether you are looking to make a project for Christmas Eve dinner next week, Hanukkah celebration, or that office party that you forgot you have to bring a white elephant gift to, I feel like I am personally attacking myself right now. No sweat fam, I got you covered because in today's video we are going to be making not one, not two, but three pretty cool handmade gifts that can be made in one day or less. Yes, I said it in one day or less. And since the holidays are basically tomorrow, we have no time to waste. So let's get started. <music> Okay, friends, before we jump on in to these projects, I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, SawStop. The common thread in all three of these projects today is SawStop's new compact table saw. Their newest, smallest, and most affordable table saw. The compact table saw might be small, but it packs a really big punch, just like someone else I know. The new compact saw comes equipped with SawStop's patented safety system, which stops a spinning blade when and if it comes in contact with skin, minimizing a potentially life-altering injury to a mere scratch. I mean, okay, have you seen those viral videos of people trying to cut hot dogs on a saw stop blade. Yeah, it speaks for itself. The new compact table saw comes with everything you need to get the job done in any size shop. It has a 10 inch blade for maximum cutting capacity, micro adjust features for cutting precise angles, an on saw storage compartment for tools and accessories, and an extendable fence which allows you to rip materials up to 24 and a half inches in width. It's also super compact which means it can be carried around or moved really easily. If you've been here for a while then you will know that I have been using a saw stop table saw for years. I have always made a promise to you to share products that I love and believe in. Honestly, hands down, my saw stop table saw is at the top of the list of my favorite things in my workshop. If you want to learn more about saw stops, new compact table saw, you can click the link below this video and Hey, there's even time in the schedule to order one as a gift. I mean, let's be real. If someone bought me a saw stop, for the holidays or for my birthday or just because like they love me, they would easily jump to the top of my favorite people list. Just saying. Speaking of gifts though, let's jump on into creating some last minute holiday gifts. All right, friends, let's jump in to these gift giving ideas. So for gift giving idea number one, the first thing we're gonna need is a bottle of wine for gifting and for emotional support. But for real, so we are going to be making a custom wine bottle box for the first gift because who doesn't love getting some wine for the holidays? The cool part about a project like this is that the dimensions can be customized based on whatever bottle that you're gifting. So if you're not a wine person, if you're a tequila gal, a whiskey lover, whatever it is, we are going to get started on that one now and then we're gonna celebrate after. Let's do it. Okay, so let's do it. Mm -mm. So I decided to splurge a little on this gift. I decided to purchase some red oak for my box. If you want to make it with cheaper materials, it could be made out of pine, it could be made out of free pallets you found on the side of the road. Whatever makes you and your wallet happy, do it. I um, picked up one three quarter inch thick board, one quarter inch thick board. And the first thing I'm going to want to do to start this project is I want to cut grooves into the three quarter inch board because this is what is going to fit the quarter inch piece of wood as our cover. So I am going to set the depth of this saw to about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't need to be anything wild. And then I'm going to cut quarter inch grooves into the top and the bottom of these boards boards to act as the top and the bottom of the box. So let's do it. 
So VO Sam jumping in here to clarify what is going on here. So all I'm doing is cutting a quarter inch deep groove into each side of the face on this board and then slightly moving the fence over a bit to widen the groove. On my old saw, I'd have to tap the fence with my hand to get it to budge, but it was honestly really nice to have the ability to just turn a little knob, a micro mount to get the fence to move over just a tiny bit to make these cuts. Also, I didn't worry too much about measuring them exactly as I went. Instead, I just cut them and then I dry fit the panels until I I was happy with the fit. Okay, so grooves are cut. So as you can see, I cut them wide enough for the quarter inch board to fit in. Not super snug, but like snug enough. Now that all of the grooves are cut, I am going to cut this whole board into the pieces I need to create my box. I'm gonna be joining these together using mitered corners and all the edges. Again, totally optional. You don't have to do that. I just want to for this particular project. Yeah, so let's get the table saw to 45 degrees and cut some pieces for a box. Mm, 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 mm. I'm really excited about knocking out all these projects if you can't tell. So one thing I really loved having was this low fence option to keep my mitered corners from sliding under the fence when cutting. But if you don't have this option on your saw, you might want to clamp a piece of scrap wood to your fence instead. Also, I never thought I'd ever say this, but having a bottle of wine in the shop was really helpful for this project because I used it periodically to make sure that it would fit inside of the pieces I was cutting. Okay friends, one more cut and then we assemble. So I'm taking this piece, it's gonna be my front piece, little dude right here, and I am going to cut this part of the top off so that when you slide the top of the box forward, it has a place to slide. Let's do it. Wine box assemble! If only it were that easy. Nope, I lied, I <laughs> still have one more thing to do. I forgot that I have to cut the bottom. I have to rip it down to size to fit inside of the grooves because this is six inches wide right now and I need it to be four and a half. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm also loving how accurately calibrated this measuring tape is on the saw itself. Oh, okay, bye. All right. Now we can assemble. Okay, I'm gonna use glue, I'm gonna use clamps, and I am gonna use pin nails so that you don't have to wait forever for this thing to dry. Let's do it. Okay friends, so we are going to kind of one up this a little bit. I actually kept the off cut piece of the end piece that I trimmed up before I put the box together. And then when the box is closed, it's gonna look like a continuous box, which I think is gonna be kind of cool. Glue. I'll put some pin nails in there. Let's dry fit this. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, that looks kind of cool. Oh, I like that. Sweet. I think this thing's ready for some wood finish. Oh, I'm excited about that. Okay, so I'm trying out a product I've never tried before. It is called 
a scorch marker. Basically, I put a stencil on the cover of the wine box and this should allow me to trace it and then use a heater to embed it in the wood as if I'm wood burning. Let's try it out. I hope I don't ruin this box. Bring this one together, friends, right? I'm just gonna outline it. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. but I also feel like it kind of just like burnt the rest of the wood with it. So I don't know, maybe I'll just stain around it. I don't love it, but I feel like it's in there, right? I'm gonna make some magic with this. Maybe just stain around it and finish it. Let's see what it turns out. True story, I keep it real. I'm not really sold on the cover of this wine box. I may fix it later, but I am stoked on how the box turned out in general. But for now, it's not bad for less than a day of work and it makes a really easy and fun gift giving idea that can be easily personalized. And now that this project is done, let's move on to gift giving idea number two. Okay friends, time for another gift giving idea. So this project is actually a project that I published on my website a few years ago, way before I ever thought about having a YouTube channel. So I don't have a video tutorial for this, but I do have a website tutorial for this. I'm also really stoked about making a video tutorial for this one because it is one of my most popular gift giving projects on my website every single year by far. So we are gonna be making a DIY jewelry holder for this next gift. This is a really great one for this because it is highly customizable. It's only gonna take us like an hour and a half to two hours to build. And it is honestly a great project for beginner woodworkers. So that being said, let's get started. Okay friends, so to get started on this project, we are going to cut a quarter inch piece of plywood down to size. It doesn't really matter what size you wanna make this project. Depends on how much jewelry the person you're gifting has, I guess. So I'm just gonna go with the flow here and see what feels good. Let's do it. Jumping on in here to talk about how much I love this additional low fence option on the new saw. I actually haven't seen this before on a compact saw and I'm obsessed. I just flipped down the additional fence and it acted as a shelf to support my cut, which is so helpful when working with wood that wants to flex. Saw stop nailed it. Okay, friends. So now that the backer has been cut, we just need to cut a couple of frame pieces and decorative pieces. And I'm gonna do that using some one by two boards. I'm not too worried about dimensions here. The only dimensions that actually need to be perfect are the frame pieces on the outside. Other than that, it's kind of like you have creative freedom. And so we're just gonna go with the flow. Let's see what happens. So I just wanted to talk about this because I don't have any dimensions for this project on my blog post because I'm not gonna lie, I love projects that feel organic and fun and this is one of them. I literally just cut my pieces until I was happy and just copied the layout from my website. So feel free to steal it if you like it. Okay, so now we are going to pre-drill holes into every piece that is going to get hooks to hold jewelry. Easy enough. drilled in all of the pieces that I want to hang jewelry from. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach all of the one by two pieces together and then I'm not gonna attach the back piece quite yet because what I wanna do is do that, sand everything, stain everything, and then I'm going to attach the back piece as kind of the last part of the project before we hang it.
All right, friends, so two coats of stain and a coat of finish are drying on the jewelry holder. Once that dries, we are going to be placing these little hooks, and these are what is going to be holding up all of the jewelry. Once these are installed, we can add the back, we can add hooks for hanging, and there you have it. We're good to go with gifting this gift to a friend. One more gift idea, done. Let's finish this up. I absolutely love this project and would frankly be so stoked to get it as a gift from someone. I love how customizable it is. I love how personal it can be. I hope that you all love this one as much as I do. The last one I made was actually a gift for someone as well and she loves to show me how it is in her house with all of her favorite jewelry and that makes me so happy. As much as I'd love to stare at this project forever though, we do have one more gift giving idea to tackle, so let's do it. So I'm actually really excited about this gift giving idea for a couple of reasons. First, because this is really only gonna take us about 30 minutes to make, so talk about a last minute gift. Two, we're only gonna be using two tools to make this happen, a table saw and a sander. And three, I have been saving this really cool off cut of acacia wood from a conference table that I made a while back for a local company. And I'm gonna be turning this into a stand for an iPad or a tablet. This is a super simple project that actually sells online for a decent amount of money. So we are going to make one right now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna end up keeping this one for myself. Let's get started. Okay, so first step in this process, which does not have a lot of steps, mind you, I am going to cut this slab down to size. Now, because one edge of the slab is a live edge, I'm not going to be running that against the fence. Instead, I'm going to be running the edge that is already straight against the fence for a much safer cut. So I'm going to cut my slab down to the final width and length that I want, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Let's get started. Okay, I just gotta put it out there. Acacia is not the easiest wood to cut and that just cut through that like absolute butter. That was amazing. Okay, so I think it's just a little long for my iPad. So I'm gonna cut it down, but I kind of like this funky part here. So maybe I'll just cut like an inch off this end and an inch off this end. And then I'm going to move on to creating grooves in the wood for the iPad to sit in. So let's do it. Now that I have my piece cut, I want to cut a groove into the wood so that my iPad can sit in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the depth of the blade on the saw to about half an inch deep. And then I'm going to make my cut, adjust the fence a tiny bit over, make a cut again, adjust, make the cut again until my iPad fits in that groove. Let's do it. Just like having a bottle of wine around the shop was really helpful for the first project, having my iPad around was super helpful for this project because I did the same exact thing. I just cut this groove until it was wide enough to fit my iPad. The one big difference here though is that I did add a 15 degree angle at the end of the cut so that the iPad sits at an angle when it is in the groove. Let's sand and finish. Woo, I love a quick project. Okay, 
Okay, so I am going to finish this. Before I do that though, I do wanna add some bumpers to the bottom. I wanna add them now before I add the butter because that is oil-based and this is adhesive and sticky stuff and oil stuff doesn't work well in woodworking. So I'm gonna put these directly on the sanded wood and then once these are on, I'm gonna finish the entire thing with. So pretty. I know that this last one was a very simple one, but if you have the time or the resources, it can easily be spiced up with a custom engraving, a stenciled message, or maybe even a new iPad if you're feeling really frisky. <laughs> I really love this simple project. I will actually be keeping this one for myself to hold my iPad for when I look at recipes when I'm cooking in my new kitchen, which I cannot wait to share with all of you in the new year. But I definitely will be making another one today because my mom said she wants one for the holidays. All right, hey friends. I hope that you all enjoyed this very quick and dirty last minute holiday gift giving idea video. I hope that it helps somebody with a gift giving idea this holiday season. I personally love giving handmade gifts for the holidays and I also personally believe that they don't have to break the bank or take a lot of time to make. So I hope that there was something in this video that was helpful to someone out there and that you are thinking about making one of these last minute gifts in the next couple of days. Now before I sign off, I just wanted to take a moment to say happy holidays to all of you no matter what you celebrate. I am so grateful to all of you and for all of your support, not just this holiday season, but literally all the time. I will be back in the new year with tons of new projects to share with all of you. Spoiler alert, you guys are getting a kitchen soon, so get ready. If you're as excited as I am about all of the new projects that are going to be coming to the channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. We're gonna be busy in 2023, friends. I can tell you that for sure. In the meantime though, friends, I will definitely see you all with a new project, but until then, happy holidays and happy DIYing.